Merry Christmas and welcome to worship at Geneva Lutheran Church for what will be, I know, a very special and unique service. We've never done it this way before and we may never do it again, but one thing remains the same. And that is that I have been praying for this time together and I trust that even in the midst of all the things we've dealt with this year, that there will be something in this service that speaks to this moment for you. Maybe it will be one of your favorite Christmas hymns or seeing the choir singing them. Maybe it will be the candlelight or the communion. Maybe it's even this sweater. I'm not really sure, but whatever it is, I trust that you'll find something that will give you the encouragement, the support, and the words that you need on this night. Christmas means Jesus. Baby um, Jesus. On um, the birth of baby Jesus. 
it means um that Santa gives a, gives me a squishy unicorn. Christmas means celebrating baby Jesus' birth. What Christmas means to me is to spend time with your family, to be thankful for what you have, but it's not always about the present. Christmas means Jesus is born, Jesus being born, um, and celebrating time with my family. It means um, spreading cheer and uh, family and friends. Christmas means is that it's a big holiday and everybody's happy on Christmas Eve because it's Jesus' birthday. It means spending time with your friends and family and the day that Jesus was born. Um, putting clean Christmas ornaments um, up. Clean no Christmas order. stuff up. It means um, spending time with family and cousins. It means that it's Jesus' birthday. It means baby Jesus got born and he, uh, yeah, he got born. So they rode on a donkey and then they got to a farm and then it was like a stable and then and then there was animals in there and then they decided to go in there and found some hay and they wrapped it up in a little crib and then the baby was born and it was a boy and it was really cute. Um, he was born in a barn, and uh, all the homes were filled up. Baby Jesus' birth is when he he got birth in a barn. A manger. Baby Jesus was born in a stable. He was born in a manger in a stable, and um, everybody came to see him. He was laying in a manger. Shepherds saw uh, an angel. Saw an angel, yeah. Oh, and it baby. told them that G baby Jesus was born. And baby Jesus is Mary and um, Mary's son. His mother was Mary and Joseph. And then she put the baby Jesus to bed, to bed, so I can sleep. And then she sang, and then she sang the baby Jesus a song. Um, the three wise men followed the star once the angel told them to go to Bethlehem. They followed the star to Bethlehem. And three wise men saw a star and that led them to baby Jesus and they gave him gifts. The three wise men came to baby Jesus and gave him um, gifts and boxes. They gave a lot of jewels and like coins to baby Jesus. Uh, they was people who came to Jesus and gave him presents. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Have a healthy and happy Christmas and a happy new year. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas and stay healthy! Merry Christmas.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that the whole world should be registered. It was the first of such registrations taking place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Each person went to their own town to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He was registered with Mary to whom he was promised in marriage and who was expecting her first child. And while they were there, the time came for Mary to give birth. And she bore her firstborn son. And she swaddled him and she laid him in a manger. Because there was no place for them. There were also, in that region, shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. When suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, Do not be afraid. I come to bring you good news of great joy for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah. And this will be the sign. You will go to Bethlehem and you will find the mother and the father and the child is swaddled and laying in a manger. Then there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and singing glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom he favors. Then the angels departed and returned to heaven and the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has been made known to us. And with haste they went and they found Mary and Joseph and the child was swaddled and laying in a manger. And they told everyone all that had been made known to them about this child and everyone who heard it was amazed. But Mary treasured these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard just as it had been made known to them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I think you all know that I like to use pop culture references on Christmas Eve. It's just a fun way to make the story more current, bring it into our modern moment. But honestly, we only had one pop culture reference the entire year. And I don't think any of us want to hear much more about that. Although I did want to get out some antibacterial wipes when I heard the whole story about the baby being born in a manger. So this is looking around my office and thinking about what could we possibly say in this year my eyes landed on something. Oh yeah, it's the flame hat. 
I know. I usually only bring it out for Pentecost because that's the day when we hear about the Holy Spirit coming on the apostles and it looks like flames of fire on their head. I've also told the story a few times about Pastor Wendy and I in the Target one day and we see these hats, but you know what? The first thought in my mind was not, ooh, Pentecost. It was actually Christmas. Because my favorite Christmas show when I was a child had a guy who had a head that looked a whole lot like this. His name was Heat Miser, and he even had a song. I'm Mr. Heat Miser, I'm Mr. Sun, I'm Mr. Green Christmas, I'm Mr. 101. They call me Heat Miser, whatever I touch starts to melt in my clutch. I'm too much, but I'm bum bum. And the only thing I remembered about it, I think it was only on for a couple of years, I can't imagine why it wasn't running forever and ever like Rudolph or Frosty the Snowman, but the only thing I remembered that the really difficult thing that they were dealing with was that Heat Miser made for green Christmases. Christmas without snow. Who could imagine anything worse than that, right? I learned later that that show was called A Year Without a Santa Claus. And that actually it had a little bit more developed plot than just there wasn't going to be a white Christmas. Santa, it seemed, was getting pretty tired. Physically, he was tired, but also he felt a little bit underappreciated. He was just going to cancel Christmas. Why even bother? Mrs. Claus, though, tired and daunted by the idea of one more evening at home with a grumpy old man decided to take things into her own hands, and so she was going to go and make sure that Christmas was not canceled. As you can imagine, hijinks ensued, and it sure seemed for a whole lot of the show that Christmas was not going to make it. But alas, at the end, everything fell into place and Christmas was saved. I guess it's not that much of an unusual plot for a Christmas show. Rudolph, many of the others still have the same thing. Christmas is a danger of being canceled, and someone comes in to save it. Although up until this year, that was pure imagination. The idea that anything could change Christmas for us was impossible to imagine but not this year. This year, some of our very favorite and some of the most meaningful things about Christmas are canceled. We're not able to gather together in a large group and sing Christmas hymns and light candles and share communion and see all of the students that are home from college and the family that's visiting from afar. We're not able to go and travel to see our families in other places. And we just add it to the list of a whole lot of other things that have been canceled or basically canceled. They were changed so much in the way that we were able to experience them. Things like graduations or special trips or in our family's case, a wedding. Everything was different. And even though we pulled together and we made the best out of things in all kinds of ways, we're still grieving for all of those things that we couldn't have. And we're grieving for some of the things we can't experience tonight, too. It feels, maybe, like the plot of all those Christmas shows, of Christmas being canceled, we can actually imagine it. But as is always the case, our gospel story speaks to us in a powerful way. I mean, if you were going to script the story of the birth of Jesus, God's Son, the Messiah, this is not the script that you would write. Let's start the story with two nobodies from nowhere. I'm sure people will all listen to them and believe them when they say, yeah, this baby that we're going to have, it's actually God's son, the Messiah, come to save you. 
and this place where this baby is born, if you're writing the story of God's son, the Messiah, you wouldn't at least have him born in a house with a midwife around? Do you know how vulnerable a baby is for the first couple of hours of their life especially? I don't think Mary and Joseph were kneeling in adoration, bathed in a holy light that night. I think they were huddled together, earnestly praying for God to show them what their next step might be as they cared for this child. And their marketing plan? You know who we should have tell the story? A bunch of people who live half the year out in a field. All of it is wrong. All of it is a terrible idea. All of it is a plot that keeps the first Christmas from happening in the first place, much less canceling it. But also, as is always the case, this is when God does his best work. When it is abundantly clear that it is not about anything one person can do, it's not about our resources or our gifts or our capabilities or our power to influence things. It is so clear that it is all about what God can do. And so we come to this Christmas Eve with so many things. And we can believe that this story, a plot that no one would choose, can handle all of the things that we've dealt with this year. And not just the things like graduations and weddings, the things that have been revealed this year, like the great inequities that we know exist. Like we now know that the people who serve us, who prepare our food, who milk our cows, are really, really vulnerable. And we bring it all. And we place it in the manger. And we trust that we don't have the gifts or the abilities or the resources or the influence to do a whole lot about it, but God does. Christmas is not canceled. Jesus is not canceled. Peace and joy and love and hope are not canceled. In fact, they might be speaking to us more powerfully than ever before. And you know, maybe the flame hat is exactly what we need this night. To think about the Spirit as God's breath, breathing life into the world in the creation, at Pentecost, and in his Son. Breathing life into the world. And now, since we've heard the story, that life is also breathed into us. We are called to carry it into the world. God's love, God's hope, God's peace, and God's joy in the story of one person, his son Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us declare our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people and this night we're going to do them a little bit differently. I'm going to be listing a number of parts of your body, so hands, eyes, mouth, and whenever I mention a part of your body, I would like for you to touch that part. So if I say lips, if I say eyes or ears, and we're going to do this tonight to remember that this is the night that our God became enfleshed and incarnate among us. So won't you please join me in a time of prayer? Jesus, your heart loved us so much that you came into the world as a human being like one of us to save us from sin and death. Open our hearts to love like you did so much. Jesus, you looked with your eyes and saw all who face hardship and you heard with your ears the cries of all who feel hopeless. Make our eyes and ears sensitive to all who are hurting around us. Jesus, you used your hands to gather people together, to feed and to heal. Bless the work of our hands to be as impactful as yours in building your kingdom on earth. Jesus, you spoke with your mouth words of blessing, critique, forgiveness, and instruction. Give us words to speak of your glory and presence in this world. Jesus, with your feet, you traveled far and wide to spread your kingdom to as many people as possible. Give courage to our feet to go where you most need us to be. And Jesus, with your arms stretched wide, you embraced us in grace and mercy. Embrace us still on this day, and all who feel lonely or sick or sad, especially those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. We pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to take time to share peace with those who are around you or to send a text message or an email to those who aren't nearby. You can feel free to pause this video in order to do that. It is important for us to be able to share in the peace of the Lord. Peace be with you.
Tonight, as we prepare for a celebration of Holy Communion, I'll note that many of you have received in packets dropped at your home or in the mail, a small communion kit like this one that has grape juice in the bottom and a host spread on the top. But know that you can use any wine and any bread or grape juice in your home. And you can also celebrate communion without having any elements at all. That's just a tangible reminder of the love that we know God has for each and every one of us. And so let's join in remembering all that God has done for us. Holy God, creator of all and source of life, at the birth of time, your word brought light into the world. In the fullness of time, you sent your word born of Mary to shine in our darkness and to make us your daughters and sons. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his birth and life among us, his death and resurrection, we await his coming again when all things will be restored in him. By your spirit, bless us and bless this bread and cup that held and nourished by you, we may live as your children, shining with the light of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And so the time has come in our service when we light our candles and we sing Silent Night together. Tonight we're not gathered here in this space together, but I'm thinking of each of you. If you're home in you're home alone or if you're gathered with your family, we remember the light of Christ coming among us. And we know that we are never alone. And tonight I light my candle with an incredible amount of gratitude for each of you and for the story of Christ who brings us together.
May the word that Mary brought to birth carry you into new and abundant life. Amen. May the word that Joseph cradled in his arms enfold you with love and strength. Amen. May the word that angels proclaimed in song bring harmony to our world. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.